Good morning, this is Vonna Pfeiffer, the Twisted Stitcher, and today is Thursday, June the 8th of 2023. And I am coming in for a very quick floss tube for May here on what my progress in May was. As some of you may know, if you've watched my previous video, that I chose to do monogamous May and I focused on my Lavender and Lace Santa of the Forest by Marilyn Levitt Emblem. This piece is being stitched on 28 count natural raw Zweigert linen, two strands over two threads. Right now I'm going to put in what my progress photos were. So from May the 1st and the progression through until current day, which is I stopped stitching on June the 4th was the last time I stitched on him. So right here, where I started and where I ended up. And here is my Santa of the Forest, where he stands right now. Like I said, the last time I stitched on him was Sunday, June the 4th. I'm very pleased with how far I got. Let me get, bring you a little bit closer so that you can see some of the finer details. The staff is a bear to stitch because, of course, he's done in all... Crinic blends with DMC to give it depth. You can see that there really does look like a depth, of, uh, like it really is gold. Someone asked me last time if these, if I stitched these by dragging the thread along or if I did stitch them individual stitches, and I stitched them individual stitches. I did not drag it, and then they asked me, how did I do it? Well, with Krynik, you can't really do a pin stitch. So what I do is I actually make the stitch, and then I I, I make a, I go underneath the one leg of the thread underneath, and I actually do a loop knot on the back. Like you would start a loop thread, like the loop start. That's what I do on the back. I know we're not supposed to make knots on our work, but I don't want threads to pop and I don't want to drag my thread on this. I just don't want to drag my thread. So that's what I did. His beard, <clears throat> in all honesty, I did, I enjoyed stitching his beard. I did not have a um, problem with just stitching it. As I saw it evolve, I just wanted to get it done, of course, because I just could see how much area I was filling in. I mean, here's a five inch ruler. <laughs> That's how big his beard is. His beard is huge. I mean, this whole piece is huge. It's, um, I'm, I've got it on 22 inch end bars. 
so the, the end bars here are 22 inches. So right now with my ruler on the rolls, you can see it is 17 inches so far. What is showing is 17 inches and it's gonna go way down here. It's gonna be about, it's about a square design almost, but um, it's big. It's bigger than what you think. Definitely, definitely bigger than what I thought. You know, you look at dimensions and you think, oh yeah, no problem. Ha ha. But anyways, the beard, the beard here was really just brought the whole thing to life, I felt like. The owl, stunning. Look at the eyes on the owl. And all the confetti of the owl that just brings it to life. The bear was the next big thing that I tackled after the the um, beard. The next big thing was the bear, and the bear took me a week to stitch alone. You don't wouldn't think that that bear looks that big, but it honestly is. Let me get my ruler, my little ruler again. Again, a five inch ruler, and you can see it is four inches. One, two, three, four. It's five inches wide and about that tall too. It's big. And of course, another thing that um, made it really hard to stitch or time consuming, not hard to stitch was um, all the confetti. But look how that confetti, those color placements makes that snout look like it's 3D, amazing. It's amazing to me. Um, she was truly, Marilyn was truly a, a, an artist with her use and placement of color. Just fantastic. Then after I got the bear done, I moved on over this way and I stitched his shirt, I guess is what it is. How, I mean, what do you, I, I love that shirt. I just love that. I put a few stitches in the bunny just to make sure that I, was counting correctly and then I moved on to just go over here. It's funny, as I was stitching this, I was like, what is this? Because on the picture, these things I thought were just medallions. I didn't realize that's the, his mittens. <laughs> and so when I realized it was his mitten, when I was like, what is this thing? And I was like, oh, it's his thumb. So I am discovering things that I didn't know as I'm stitching it. I, of course, have the outline uh, here of the space to fill in the, the dove. The dove is going to be another huge thing again. I mean, here we go. Let me, with my five inch ruler, it's going to go from, you know, wing to wing. It's going to be probably five inches too. So it's, it's very large. But overall, I mean, just look at him. He's glorious. I told Keith that I could die right now and he could frame this and it would still be okay. <laughs> so I, I just, I just am so pleased that I finally am tackling this. I mean, it's just really bringing me joy. I have always loved this piece and um, I always loved it. I had the pattern and the story behind this is I went to a retreat. I haven't been to a retreat for probably five or six years. And the last time retreat I went to was the one um, in Columbus. Well, no, it was in Ohio from the Columbus, Ohio uh, needlework shop. And it was in Berlin, Ohio, which I love Berlin, Ohio. And um, I had seen a lady there. I'd gone to three of their retreats and I had seen a lady stitching this Santa of the forest. And every year she would bring it and stitch on it. And I don't know how far she was, but I can remember, I mean, she was far along, but I can remember watching her stitch that Santa and thinking, oh my goodness, how beautiful is he? You just do not realize how beautiful he is until you see him in real life. And I thought, I have got to stitch that. So did I come home and stitch him? No, because, you know, squirrel, you know, FOMO, and all of that stuff. But when I started to be very contemplative about my stitching journey the last couple of years, I've pulled a lot of projects 
that I have purchased had good intentions about and never started. And instead of buying the next sparkly thing, I'm really revisiting my stash. And it's not that I'm not purchasing things. I'm purchasing threads and fabrics and notions and, and all kinds of stuff like that. I'm just kind of being careful on what designs I purchase because I'm 53 years. I'm going to be 53 years old. And I need to be cognizant in my mind. In my own, this is my own personal journey. It doesn't have any kind of reflection on what anybody else should do, should or can or could do. This is just my own personal journey. And my journey is I want to see some of these beautiful designs that I have gathered over the years, stitched, and finally on my wall. So, people have asked, will I keep Santa Claus out all year? You betcha. You betcha I will. And I know exactly what kind of frame I want. I want a big, chunky, gold frame. It'll probably be expensive because I usually have the tendency to to pick out what I think is not going to be expensive, and it's usually the most expensive. But I want a big, chunky gold frame. I'm consider, I'm considering matting. I don't usually mat my pieces, but I'm considering a mat. I'm maybe thinking about a round, an oval mat. But we'll see. I want to. I just want to. First, I have to get him finished, and then I'll decide what I'm going to do with him. I'll frame him myself, like I do all my pieces. But anyways, there is Santa Claus. I am so, 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 so pleased with my project. Or, I'm so, so, well, I am pleased with my project, but I'm so pleased with my progress. I really, really am. I think people on Instagram that follow me on Instagram think that I'm not being excited about my progress. Oh, people, I am being very, dis I am very excited about my progress. I'm very proud of myself. There is probably, I have probably stitched 30,000 stitches over June. I haven't totally, um, I haven't totally figured that out, but I know this, the, the beard himself, the beard itself, just from his lips down was like 10, 10 or 12,000 stitches. And then you consider this bear and all of this, I bet you I've stitched 30,000 easily, 30,000 stitches in the month of May. So there he is. I thought I would end up with, I get a lot of questions about what scroll rods I use, and I do not have a video on it. I used to have a video. Sorry, let me answer this. This is Ellie. She's at college. She told me that she made it to college. Sorry about that. Okay, so I use scroll rods. I almost 100% use scroll rods. I will sometimes use a Q-snap, but I prefer scroll rods. Um, I do stitch in a stand. I have, e I have several lap stands, and I have several floor stands. I would suggest that you go to my blog. I always have the link to my blog in my show notes. I have a tab on my blog that, that explains every stand I have and use and why I like what and what for what reason. I like all of them. I use all of them, to be honest with you. But there's some that I fall in love with and use a lot. You know, I kind of rotate through them. Right now, I'm using a lap stand that's handmade by Mike Hope. It's very universal. You can put a hoop on it. You can put a Q-snap on it. You can put a scroll frame on it, and it works great. But anyways, the brand of scroll rods I use is Roller Frame. I do not have a video on how to load them, but I believe that Christine at Stitch All The Things does have a video. If you would like to go to her channel and look up uh, her Roller Frame, I believe that she also uses Roller Frame scroll rods. The reason I like this is that they're very lightweight. Okay, see, I got one hand, very lightweight. Another reason why I like it is that it splits and on one side of the dowel, the rod is like carpet tacks and you actually pierce your fabric onto the tacks and then close these up and put them into the, the end bars. I like that. I don't have to baste. I don't have to glue. I don't have to do anything. I, number one question is, <clears throat> can I achieve drum tight? Yes, I can. Yes, I can achieve drum tight. Um, 
why I use these is that when you have a span of fabric, particularly a large one, I like to have my sides tensioned. You can actually buy uh, things that are called side tensioners. This is my homemade project. <laughs> this is my homemade um, make it work type situation. I bought a bag of pacifier clips or mitten clips on Amazon and an inch wide twill tape. I put the twill tape through the clip, the pacifier clip. Then I put little knots on each end so they wouldn't fall out of the, the, this little place, this little attachment thing. And then I attach it to my linen and tie it onto my bars. I do it on both sides. It makes it really, it makes it very taut. Um, that helps to make it very taut as well. But um, the, another reason why I like the roller frame scroll rods is that I like to work with my work very close to me. So my favorite end bars for starting or small projects are eight inches. And you, I can roll and it'll be fine. But if I'm doing a large project and I find that I gain so much inspiration by seeing it come to life as I stitch it, that I like to see him out all the time. And so the beauty of roller frame is, is that I can start out with a seven or an eight inch end bar and as he grows I just get a longer end bar. These are 22 inch end bars. On his larger end bars he'll drill two holes on either end. So this is probably a span of about 18 to 20 inches and then when you put it in the very end, both of them in the very end holes, it'll be a span of about 22 inches. So that's why I love roller frames. They're very lightweight. They're very, um, you know, you can build on to them to, you know, when I'm stitching a Mirabilia, if I have to bead, I don't ever have to roll. So I can bead as I go if I want to. And I kind of work from top down. So that's nice. Then I can bead up here and I won't snag my beads as I stitch down. So that's what I use. I, I use roller frames. They are made in America. They are um, only available through needle workshops that carry the products. The Where I get mine is the Shepherd's Needle. If you call Ann at the Shepherd's Needle, she will surely be able to help you with your needs. The big thing is, is, well, what size rollers do I use? What size rollers do I buy? You want to think about the size project that you typically work on, what range of size, and you want to get the widest bars for it. If you're only going to buy one set, you want to get the widest bars that um, will accommodate the size projects you work on. They're not very expensive. The, the bars are like 35 bucks and the end bars are about the same, depending on what size you get. Um, I mean, I don't think that I, I mean, yes, that a chunk of money. Yes. But it, you know, I've been stitching on roller frames for 20 years and these bars, I know by the color that they are, are old ones. So, cause see, they're not even in close and color and they're all come that color. These 22 inch end rods are end bars are new. So anyways, They, um, they're, I love them. I love roller frame and that's where I am with my Santa Claus. So what am I going to do for July? I'm sticking with Santa. I'm going to stick with him and hopefully I will get him done. My goal is to get him done by my 53rd birthday on July the 5th. Then I've got to make decisions on what am I going to do in July after my birthday. If he's done, I'll switch to a new project. If he's not done, then I'll have to continue stitching because I'm stitching on Santa until he's completed, no matter when that is. If it takes me till December 25th, then it takes me to de till December 25th. <laughs> and I won't have very interesting um, floss tubes. But I really am enjoying this monogamous stitching. I'm going to implement more monogamous stitching in my life after I've seen how I have enjoyed it so much this month and how I got something done. I feel I've gone made gangbusters progress and I've really just really enjoyed it. So what am I going to stitch after I get Santa done? I don't know. Uh, 
I was going to start a new Santa on my birthday. And then I kind of have had second thoughts about starting something new. I kind of think, should I stick with one of my things that I have that's going and get another whip done? I have Madonna of the Garden that I would love to see finished. I have uh, Lady of the Flag that I've started three times. And this last start, I've decided I'm sticking with. And I would love to see her done. Should I just pull her out and get her done? That's the question. That's the question. What should I do? Start a new Santa? Should I get a start Madonna of the or not start but finish my you know work on Madonna of the garden and finish her should I work on my lady of the flag and finish her I don't know it's all fluid and I think about it with every stitch I take on this guy but that's where I am and that's what I have to share with you today I have 81 cookies to ice for my nephew's graduation party that is on Saturday. I cut, made all the dough and cut and baked them off yesterday. And today is icing day. So may the force be with me that I get those done, dried and packaged so that we can celebrate him on Saturday. So until the next time, thank you all. Thank you all for coming and joining me today and seeing my progress on Santa. I wish you any, everything, all good things. Lots of love and happy stitching. So keep a smile on your face and one in your heart, and you just can't go wrong. Until July, people, I will see you then. Bye-bye. You have to dance with them. I don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> ¶¶